Do you have trumpet breaks like this? You might not need new brakes or new brake pads. You just need to service your brakes. In this video, I'm gonna give you some strategies to combat the trumpet brakes. Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. Today, I'm gonna to try to give you some strategies to get rid of those noisy brakes. Now, this isn't good for YouTube, but who cares? This video is for you guys. I'm gonna throw a couple timestamps down in the description through the procedure, because I'm gonna add a lot of context. So if you just wanna see a couple bits, go to those timestamps. Now, first off, I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. Be sure to consult your local bike shop or the manufacturer of the brakes in hopes of fixing the problem. But let's hold up real quick. It's really hard to create original YouTube content and coincidence did happen. You could actually check out Wild Grit in the card here. She made a video about nearly the same thing and we basically hit on the same point. She introduces a couple different strategies that I've also done in the past. She actually has experience being a bike mechanic so you can check that out there. I'm making this video primarily to be a catalyst for you to go home and fix them. Of course helping you save some money. If you don't think you can service your brake pads, don't do it. Just take it to your bike shop. Now when it comes to brakes, there are three likely outcomes in which you'll probably have noisy mountain biking brakes. So what are the causes of trumpet brakes? The most likely cause of your trumpet brakes is probably that the pads are glazed. And they're basically caused from heavy usage on long downhills where your pads get overheated, essentially glaze over. The second culprit could actually be legitimate contamination. Did you spill any fluid on your pads? Did you accidentally spray some lubricant when you were lubing your chain onto your rotors? Did you touch your rotors with a greasy rag? You get the picture. And a third cause is kind of miscellaneous. Maybe it's just the natural noise of the brake. SRAM is a really good example of this. They have what we call the gobble when you go downhill with those. Uh, that's a natural cause. Uh, some other things include fine dust, water, or mud. And there's a chance that it could be something stemming from that. In that case, it's just a basic cleaning of your brakes with some rubbing alcohol. So what are you gonna need? You're gonna need your multi-tool with all the hex wrenches to take your brake pads off. You're gonna need a very clean rag or paper towel, isopropyl alcohol, and 220 sandpaper. I'm also gonna treat these pads as if they were contaminated. So you will need an oven. Since I'm running Shimano brakes, I'm also gonna replace a couple pads with previously contaminated new pads. Don't ask me how they were contaminated. And for one other likely scenario, we're also gonna include a bleed cup and mineral oil. You don't need these for every step, and I'll let you know when we go through the procedure, but kind of boiling it down, the isopropyl alcohol, the paper towels, and the 220 sandpaper are probably what you're gonna need. All right, let's get started with the Captain Obvious moment of the day. You're gonna need to remove those brake pads. Next, I'm gonna inspect those pads. I noticed a clicking noise when I was running these, and this is actually from one of the pads being worn down too much. There's a little square thing above the pad, and that basically is an indication that you're running a little low on ammo there and that you probably need to change them out. I'm gonna be replacing them with previously contaminated new pads. We're gonna kick this off by putting a little bit of alcohol on the paper towel as well as some alcohol on the brake pads. I'm gonna be rubbing this in a circular motion back and forth until all the dirt and grime is eventually gone and then the pads show that they're clean. The next step is with the clean pads, I'm basically gonna sand them with 220 sandpaper. I'm gonna be kind of unpredictable with my sanding motion, circular, up and down, side to side, all that stuff, until basically that glaze color leaves the pads. A lot of times this is probably gonna fix the problem. But since I have contaminated pads on hand, I'm going to treat these as if they're contaminated. The next step is since I think there is contamination, I'm gonna preheat the oven to 300 something. Basically bake it with some oilless chips for about 10 minutes for your entertainment. We don't wanna contaminate our new pads while baking them with food, so we're, we're not including oil with that. Now while the pads and the chips are breaking, this is gonna be a really good time to get outside and clean your bike. Also I'm gonna take some alcohol and I'm gonna clean the rotors with a fresh rag. I've seen some other people boil the rotors, sand the rotors. I'm not gonna demonstrate that. When the pads are done, I'm gonna throw them back on the bike. Now you're not done yet. You're probably gonna to need to bed them in. So take your talents to the streets, accelerate up and down the street, come to abrupt stops. Eventually your pads will get hot and they'll bed in. You might hear some noise at first, but that will probably go away after a couple of runs. If noisy brake pads was your issue, this should cure it. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Yeah. But since I'm putting new pads on, these extra steps are 100% necessary. And we're primarily focusing on Shimano. So if we take a step back, before we added, in this case, our rear pads to the brake caliper, we're gonna need to reset that caliper because we're having more thickness on the pads. We need to reset the pistons back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna put the Shimano bleed cup and level the brake lever. I'm gonna go with my brake spreader and I'm gonna push back the pistons. A lot of times it's gonna push some extra fluid into the cup. If you don't do this, you might have a hard time resetting the brake pistons and that's why I put the brake cup up there. Of course, the tire and the rotor have to be removed from this process. Once the pistons are reset, I'm gonna loosen the caliper, I'm gonna put my tire and my rotor back into place, I'm gonna put my pads in, and I'm gonna straighten everything out. Another common cause for rubbing noises is that the caliper is actually rubbing against the rotor. You gotta make sure that that is straight. I might leave it a little loose. I'm gonna grab the brake lever multiple times until that kind of resets. Then I'm gonna straighten the brake caliper out. This should reset and basically top bleed everything. If you saw a lot of dirt in the cup when you were basically doing the top bleed and pushing the fluid out, you might need to flush it. That's a whole nother subject for another day. When you have everything back to normal, you have all your ducks in a row and your, your caliper and rotors straightened out, this is when you're gonna go to the street and bed those in. It's essentially the same process with a couple extra steps. And that's basically it. If the problem persists, I recommend you taking it to your local bike shop to see what they can do for you. But for me, this solves the problem about 99% of the time. Hopefully this is gonna save you some money and also increase your braking performance along the way. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. And if there's anything I missed, well, leave a comment. And if there's anything else that you want me to look into, additionally, leave some advice down there. If you're new to the channel and or you've been around for a while and you haven't done so, be sure to subscribe. That really helps me out. And also be sure to tap that notification bell so you don't miss any mountain biking topics coming forward. There's also a special place in my heart for those that share my videos. I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you have a great day and I hope this is a great catalyst to save some money and improve your mountain biking experience. We'll see you later.